what is going on everybody welcome back to our channel Mexico Tech Learning in this video we are going to build a custom sensor for airflow called Kubernetes spot sensor the outline includes first of all we are going to look at some prerequisites that you have to have in order to understand and build this custom sensor next we are going to look at what Kubernetes spot sensor is and why do we need it, how to use it and how it's gonna work under the hood. And next we are going to build this sensor by start writing the code and then finally testing and see how it works. So on the prerequisites, the first thing that you need to have an understanding of is what is an airflow sensor. If you haven't, I have made a dedicated video for this, so do check that. The link is at the top right corner. The next is to make you aware of how Airflow works with Kubernetes Executor and how to run Airflow on Kubernetes. If you haven't set this up, then I would highly recommend you to watch my this video. The link is at the top right corner in which I'm explaining in depth about how Airflow works with Kubernetes. There is also another video that I made recently on spinning up Airflow in uh, Kubernetes using Rancher Desktop. This Rancher Desktop setup is a lot easier than the one explained in my previous video. And this Rancher desktop is the one that we are going to use for this example video. And the next is you have to have understanding about what Kubernetes pod operators are and how they work under the hood. I do have a dedicated video for these as well, so do check them out. Right, so just a bit of a recap first to see how a typical example of an airflow sensor looks like. So for example, you have a DAG. The first task is it's just waiting for a file from somewhere to land before it starts ingesting the data and other downstream pipelines. So let's say the sensor code is a file sensor that's waiting for a file to be landing somewhere and the poke interval is 30 seconds. And if your airflow is using Kubernetes executor, then what the scheduler will do is actually spin up a separate pod in Kubernetes for this task. And as soon as the task finishes, the pod dies. So Airflow does comes with a couple of uh, pre-built sensors for you, like for example, uh, DynamoDB sensor, Snowflake sensor, etc. But let's suppose what if you want to have your own custom sensor that's not already available in Airflow. And also it's quite complex sensor that you have built for your organization and it requires a lot of Python dependencies. So for that, you would be better off uh, using a separate image that can work as part of your sensor. So in that scenario, we would be better off using some kind of a Kubernetes pod operator, but uh, in the form of a sensor. An example of such sensor that spawns by Kubernetes pod operator would look something like this. So as you can see, the arguments in this uh, Kubernetes pod sensors have uh, some bits of community spot operator as an example it takes the image it takes the image poll policy argument etc and you can see other arguments from this which are taken from the sensor for example poke interval mode timeout etc so basically this class community spot sensor that we are going to build will be a combination of community spot operator as well as airflow sensors so in this example let's suppose we are giving it an image called readiness checks and the argument is so we are like asking it to check for the state of a given table for the given date now under the hood how it will work is exactly as similar to how kubernetes pod operator works so a scheduler spins up a watcher pod using kubernetes executors and then the kubernetes pod operator actually spins up a worker pod that runs the image that we have provided so that is how it will gonna go since the mode is rescheduled, that means that uh, on every poke interval, in this case one minute, it is going to spin up a worker pod for us, check the state of this table, either it's ready or not ready. In both cases, the pod is going to destroy. Task will succeed if the readiness state is true, otherwise it will be up for retry until the max timeout exceeds. So that will be the working operation and let us now dive into the IDE and start writing the code for this. So this is the repository that we are going to start working on and it's available in my GitHub page. The link is in the description below. And this repository was demonstrated when I showed you how we can spin up Airflow on Kubernetes using Rancher Desktop. So let us go ahead and write the custom sensor code. So in my DAGs, uh, I have already created this uh, file called K8S pod sensor and it's empty right now. So first of all, we are going to import some important bits. Airflow exceptions, Kubernetes pod operator, and the base sensor, the base sensor operator. 
So let us go ahead and write this uh, class called Kubernetes pod sensor that inherits from base sensor operator as well as the Kubernetes pod operator. So first thing first, on the initialization, we are going to pass in all of the arguments of both of these uh, parent class. And now the most important bit is the poke method of this sensor that we are going to override. My IDE would recognize this as a method of a base sensor operator because I haven't installed these. That's why my IDE isn't recognizing it. But this method here is actually defined in base sensor operator and we are actually going to override it. So first of all, we are going to add a try accept AFL exception and uh, return false. And if it succeeds, we are going to return true. Now here, what we are going to do is trigger the execute method of Kubernetes pod operator through which it actually spins up a pod for us. And if for some reason an exception occurs, we are just going to log a message saying Kubernetes pod sensor failed, possibly because the sensor condition not met and it's going to retry. So that is it actually. So to recap, we are changing the behavior of uh, the poke method of the sensor saying that on every poke trigger the execute method which is going to spin up a pod for us and if it succeeds we return true otherwise false now let us go ahead and write the tag that uses this sensor first of all importing some important bits as well as the community spot sensor that we build and the second thing we are going to do is initialize the instance of our DAG. Um, so let us uh, just uh, add a dummy task here that uses uh, the bash operator. And then we are going to have another task called as, uh, so let us uh, define it over here somewhere. Again, nothing new here. This is still the same code as I wrote in my last Aflow sensors video. Now in the chain, we have added sleep for 10 seconds and then the final task. Let us now add another task in here. I don't know, maybe call it as create external table readiness task. Then the name of the table, for example, this is an external table used by some other teams maybe, and it's uh, ingesting the data of iOS, blah, blah, etc. And we give it the name of the table and the tag itself. Now let us create this function. Now this function is actually going to return the community spot sensor. And here we are going to define some bits. Uh, for example, the image name, the arguments, and the rest of the April sensor requirements like poke interval, mode, timeout, name, uh, ID, and DAG ID. So, um, so for the name of the pod, we actually have to be careful with this. So I just uh, created this function small called make safe names. It actually limits the characters to 62 because otherwise Kubernetes doesn't like it. Then let us define the image, poke interval, and the readiness timeout. Um, so in this case, I'm saying uh, the image name is readiness check, the poke interval is 25 seconds, and the timeout is 60 seconds. So the max retries in this case will be two because on the third retry time, it's going to time out. So this image is actually out of the context of this video, but I will provide you the code for this in my GitHub because this image is actually going to access the DynamoDB table to view the content. For that, it requires IAM authentication keys. So in this case, I have just created uh, an IAM keys in my AWS giving read access to DynamoDB table to this user. And this image expects us to pass these keys as environment variables. So we can do that as part of the Kubernetes pod operator. In this case, the pod sensor by saying nvars as these both keys. So that is pretty much it, I guess. So let us go ahead and test this out. First of all, we are going to build the Airflow image. Uh, we are going to use this tool called uh, Nerd CTL. Uh, that comes along with the Rancher desktop. So for this to work, you have to make sure that Rancher desktop is actually working. I have actually provided the commands in the readme as well. If you look at uh, here, so we're gonna copy this. 
so from airflow dax directory yes we are already in there so i'm gonna say nerdctl and so for this we do have to provide the namespace as well uh rest of the arguments are exactly the same as the docker so build and we're going to say airflow okay that's pod sensor right our image is ready now we are going to copy this image and paste it in our helm charts values over here and the other image that we are going to be using inside this uh, pod sensor which is this dynamo db readiness uh, readiness check is the one that i have already built using this nerd ctl tool on the same namespace the code and the entire repository for this image will be provided to you separately the link will be in the description below so make sure it's built and ready so now if you go to your rancher desktop uh, ui and go to images and in k8s uh, namespace make sure that this image is present as well as your uh, readiness check nice so all looking good so now let us go ahead and deploy airflow the description should be in the docs here uh, deploy airflow by helm so from helm chart repository we have already in there we are simply going to run uh, these commands uh, we have already set the image inside the value so we don't have to override it the one thing that i will do is this uh, override policy to never right it's all deployed let us go ahead to our k9s right so it's been deployed now let us go ahead and port forward the web ui to 8080 that is fine now we go to our local host 8080 uh, the admin it's admin and i think the password was one two three four five six seven eight nice we have our tag up and running so let us go ahead and enable this tag and see how it looks like okay auto refresh hmm seems like uh i did enable it but there is no scheduled time for it so that's why it won't run unless you hit this trigger button manually right so it should run now as you can see this is the watcher pod and it is going to spin up the worker pod for us there you go so if you can look ahead and see oops error hmm interesting so if you press d for description to see what error it is in fact we we missed it so we can view the errors from the logs here community spot sensor failed possibly because the sensor condition not met i see interesting okay cool that makes sense so it's up for retry and it's going to keep retrying after every 25 seconds for one minute and it's going to keep failing because the condition is not met right as you can see it did retry it at its max till one minute and it didn't met the conditions and it failed so in order to make this succeed we have to make sure that the check that it's looking for is true so in our case uh, it's looking for a record in dynamodb table readiness states uh, for what record exactly let's see table name is iaos ingestion let's see if i yeah i did some testing on this ios ingestion as well but it's looking for um the date ds this is the execution date so let's see which one exactly it is so if we click this and go to rendered so the rendered arguments are the date is this one 23 so let us go ahead and um, duplicate this item for the same table but in this case we are going to change the state for this so basically we are telling that the data for this table is actually ready for uh, 23rd of august 2023 and now if we retry uh, this tag and this time the sensor should pass let's see we can actually look at the logs as well so let's wait for the watcher worker pod there you go 
nice as you can see checking the state for this table for this date and says resource for date this is ready cool nice so that's why it's moving on to the downstream pipelines and then finally it's going to finish after these finishes so in the end as a conclusion i'm going to mention this specifically that uh, use this type of sensor only when your sensor conditions are not fulfilled on the pre-existing available sensors for airflow because if you have such customized requirements that are not fulfilled on the existing airflow sensors then you may need to come up with your own sensor and in case if it's such a complex sensor that it requires so much python packages on its own then it's worth running it as an independent pod again i have provided the in-depth details about why and when to use kubernetes pod operators in my video about kubernetes pod operators so if you haven't seen it do check that out the reasoning behind using the kubernetes pod sensor is exactly the same as of what advantages kubernetes pod operator provides so that is all for this video. I hope it was helpful and informative for you guys. If it was, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you are new to this channel. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. So that is all for this video. I will see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye.